The following podcast was recorded on Wednesday, June 30th, 2021, featuring Ben Breitholt and Sergio Panita of Arbor Data Science. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome to the latest edition of Talking Data. Our Talking Data series seeks to offer timely insights into macro market themes along with macro data and its impact on the economy and markets. I'm your host, Kristen Radish of Arbor Research and Trading. Our presenters today are Ben Breitholtz and Sergio Panita of Arbor Data Science. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Over the past few months, rising commodity prices have been a highly discussed topic in the mainstream media. Is it a super cycle? Is it a super head fake? I think we've all felt uh, the pressure at the gas pump and also with the price of lumber the last couple months. Commodity prices have seen significant rallies after global recoveries. How does this 2020 rally compare to the past recoveries? So this is what's been pretty wild is coming out of this global recovery, which we define as uh, leading economic indicators kind of ubiquitously improving across the globe. And I'll get into that definition a little bit more here in a second. But looking at commodities in the 2020 to 21 experience, spot prices have risen uh, the most at this point in a global recovery on record. And so it should be no surprise why everyone's kind of, you know, freaking out about commodity prices. Um, This is somewhat of akin to what we saw in 2011. Then, of course, numerous instances if we go back decades into the the 60s and 70s. Now, getting back to how we look at global recoveries is we look use OECD's composite leading indicators, which takes in a whole bunch of kind of what they believe to be leading data. It can be jobless claims for the U.S. It can be some curve stuff, um, some equity-related returns, and so on. And what's neat is they create these indices that oscillate around 100. And what we're looking for here is a recovery from when we see less than 20% of economies across the globe growing above trend, above 100, and then a recovery to above 50% of them doing this, meaning that we're starting to get this ubiquitous growth. And this is what happened in February of this year, meaning the pandemic officially kind of came out of its malaise um, and we started to see this growth. And so the chart here shows that, and the dotted line is highlighting really where February would be uh, as of this year. So as you can see, this red line is is going gangbusters. And we're kind of on pace to match some of the explosive growth that we saw that lasted much longer in the 1970s and also coming out of the great financial crisis. Uh, but what's kind of uh, different here, and I think something that we need to be cognizant of on the next chart shows that going forward from this point in the recovery, typically the commodity markets begin to lose steam. And this doesn't mean that Uh, all commodities lose steam, it means that we began to see a higher degree of dispersion. We'll see a lumber fall, which has fallen over 50% 50 from its highs, and we'll see crude oil rise. Uh, But it doesn't mean that commodities, um, individual commodities aren't going to continue. It just means that as a whole, that asset class is going to get much more confusing and is going to, I'm sure, totally um, uh, impact the inflation story. As right now, we have, you know, plenty of pundits saying, oh, transitory it is for sure. Look at lumber falling while others say, no, look at, you know, the price that we're paying at the pump, like you just said, Kristen, um, and so on. But looking at this chart, we can go and see what what's happened to spot commodity prices since August of last year through current, which they're up around 30% or so, and compare that to these, you know, past situations, past global recoveries since 1960. It broke into the two different periods here, 1960 to 1990 and 1990 to 2020. And both episodes end up seeing this period of range trading from this point in a global recovery lasting at least over the next three to six months. You can see this in the median moves, essentially going sideways. On the next chart, we show that this is also in, you know, probably the most publicized market, which would be WTI crude oil, uh, you know, away from just copper and gold, uh, kind of goes to the same fate. So we've had this tremendous rebound in crude oil, something around 70% from the August 2020 level. Um, and now uh, going forward, you know, his, history says during global recoveries, we enter this period of congestion or sideways trading. So our big story here that we kind of want to convey is that the commodity market is going to become confusing 
and it, um, we're, gonna have, we're gonna have wider dispersion, less correlation, and just buying blanketly the commodity, you know, commodity ETFs or commodity funds um, is, is maybe not the most advantageous. And we're gonna have to really pick and choose our spots here going forward before the likely, um, you know, continuation of this commodity trend that, again, looking back at past global recoveries, the commodity um, uh, rebound tends to continue after this period of congestion that lasts for the next three to six months. So let's talk about that commodity rally. Has it begun to die down? Yes, so it has. And I'm gonna bring in my colleague Sergio to talk really quickly about the kind of ubiquity of com uh, com the commodity rally. Uh, we're gonna look at the percentage actually rallying over rolling time periods, correlations, um, and so on. And that has begun to shift from extreme. So I'll pass it over to you here, Sergio, to talk a little bit about this research. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Ben. Uh, so if you see uh, this graph below, uh, what we see is the 22 tr uh, trading day uh, rolling return by all commodities. As you can see, that's recently decreased. Um, it's around right now 52% of all commodities have had a positive raw rolling one month return, uh, which is different from the rolling three month return, uh, which shows that around 80% of commodities have had a high um, rolling return in that three month period. And what's interesting there too is that the so we're, we're coming off of an extreme and if you, when we look back more historically too right sergio the, these periods of 75 80 plus percent commodities sustaining both a 22 day and a rolling 65 or three month positive return have been kind of fleeting right so they're usually short term in nature so what we're trying to pick up on is you know is this trend shifting and for now it kind of seems that way right uh, yes, uh, looking at this trend, it seems that way, yes. So on the next chart, too, I think we end up pulling in the correlations. Why don't you talk a little bit about the breakdown? And this gets into the heart of what we're talking about, that the, the commodity rally, the ubiquity of it, is something that's going to fade. And I think on one side, you're going to have the inflationistas being like, oh, you know, you know, focus on the on crude oil or focus on whatever is rising. Well, as those that are don't believe the or that believe the transitory nature are going to find plenty of opportunities to say, oh, look, lumber down 50 percent, while other things are still flying high. So, let's talk a little bit about the correlations here, Sergio. Uh, yeah. So, if you see at uh, this graph, uh, the green line shows the rolling correlations over a 22-day period, um, and as you can see, that has come down from a recent high, and we're now we're now sitting at about 42 percent. Also, uh, like Ben was saying earlier, uh, this doesn't mean that they're not, um, you know, this rally is still not going on, but that they're moving independent of each other, um, which is what we're seeing when we uh, see all these lumber prices plummeting, but we're also still seeing other commodities going up. Um, this is also shown in the 65 day uh, rolling correlations, although it's a little bit slower to move. Um, that's coming down from a recent peak um, of about 65%. Uh, is currently now sitting at around 58%. So, so it moves a little bit slower uh, than the 22 uh, trading day correlation. Uh, but what we see is, um, you know, this independent movement of commodities. Uh, they're not all just all going up at once or all decreasing at once, uh, like we were seeing previously. Let's move to the next slide. Uh, tell us more about versus what's going to happen in the long run versus the short run. Uh, yeah, so based on this graph, uh, if you look at the 20, the 252 trading day return, um, which is over the past year on the far right, you can see that almost all commodities have had a positive return. And then if you look at the three month, uh, 65 trading day returns in the middle, you can see that we still see positive returns for almost all commodities, um, albeit a few less, but it isn't until you look at uh, the one month, um, all the way on the far left that you see this really break down. You see some commodities making significant gains, uh, but you also see others, you know, tumbling downwards, such as lumber on the far left. Um, but you can see that they appear to be moving independently of each other. It's not just all going up at once, um, like the mainstream media wants you to believe. Right, and I think that's the, you know, the gist here, and this is what's gonna be so goofy. Um, so one thing you have to remember too, is that with, the base effect that was going to come and it came with like crude oil for example um, and other energy that's going to wane 
beginning in June, you know, right now. So no matter what happens with crude oil, really, if you project it out to it's going to $80 over the next year or even to $100 over the next year, no matter what, that base effect is going to erode. And that means that the inflate and impact on CPI and on headline inflation will also erode. So it's, and again, now we're going to have all these other commodities that are kind of joining the chorus. I think it's going to create a very confusing, and we've joked about how this is going to be the, you know, the summer of confusion over inflation for just about everybody and anybody. And this is starting to play out just like we kind of expected it to. And so we'll be watching these kind of more short run uh, correlations as well as distributions of returns. And we expect them to remain kind of, you know, wider and more uh, not as coordinated as Sergio indicated. So I, again, um, we don't think the commodity rally is ending by any means. We just think it's this period of pause before it potentially resumes again, just like it's done after every global recovery since 1960. And we have one more chart to put up here to talk about the speculator's long positioning. Uh, yes, yeah, so if you look at this graph, um, the blue shows the managed money's net positioning um, that has come down from a recent peak. Uh, it, was, it went up to a high of around 81%. Uh, it's currently now sitting at around 67%, uh, which shows that uh, you know speculators in the managed money, managed money side, um, you know, came from like this unified uh, long position and now they're starting to cut back on it uh, as well. Um, producer money is currently sitting at around 21% um, and it looks to appear to be increasing from a uh, recent period. And again, this is just like the chart that Sergio uh, had posted and has been using too uh, regarding correlations is if you look back historically, the kind of the um, concerted nature of long position across all commodities, when it gets above 75, 80%, again, that's kind of an indication of, of that things should be fleeting. It just doesn't sustain itself for that long in that kind of you know bullish, long everything environment. So if we are going to somewhat mean revert, you know, back towards you know 60% uh, or so uh, of, of being long commodities, that again is going to be another sign that we're getting this dispersion, this wider array. Um, you know, it, essentially the, the the things that should matter to each commodity are going to matter more. Um, you know, if it, it's grains, it's the weather, and it's the you know it's the different um, crop seasons. If it's copper, it's going to have to do you know with the housing market and actual industrial production, and it's not going to be this you know all ships get risen by the tide. You know, that tide is kind of coming out, and we got to see who's able to stay afloat. Well, thank you, Ben, and thank you, Sergio, for your thoughts today. We really appreciate it, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. As a reminder, Arbor Research and Trading is an institutional research and brokerage firm. Our two most prominent offerings are Bianca Research and Arbor Data Science. For further information, please contact Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com.